It has been a couple of weeks, but we are back with another top five list for the new 10th edition indexes. This time, another army that I do collect and play, but in a bit more of a limited scope. I am a mono corn demon player, but of course today we're going to be looking at five of the most competitive units in the whole index, not just on the corn side. So as always, like the previous ones of these videos, this isn't going to be a list of best to worst or anything like that. It's just five units that if I were running a mixed god demon list, I would very strongly be considering if I was building a competitive army. So let's not waste any time and dive straight in. Coming straight from the warp is actually the only corn unit I have in this list, and that is the fast moving, tougher, just all round better version of the blood letters, to be honest. The blood crushers are basically everything a blood letter wishes it was. And for a reasonably cheap 40 points per model, you get a far superior stat line with a 10 inch move, four wounds, toughness seven, a four up armor and four up invun save, a leadership of seven plus and an OC value of two. Those are some pretty hefty stats for that price point. The fantastic movement is really, really good and it does have some genuinely solid durability with four toughness seven wounds protected by that four up in run. Toughness seven isn't the best break point in toughness in 10th edition, but it does help against a few things. It helps against the anti-tank strength 12 weaponry that you see in quite a lot of places, as well as of course, against all that strength six and strength seven anti-infantry, anti-elite level firepower that you see on things like assault cannons and auto cannons and shuriken cannons. And that sort of stuff does make up a decent chunk of firepower in 10th edition. So it really will make quite a significant difference compared to say toughness six that things like Space Wolf's Thunderwolf cavalry have instead. So, I mean, yes, it's not the best breakpoint, but it is a nice little bonus. And I do think that in most games, you will feel that difference compared to toughness six. They also get a couple of cool war gear options. The demonic icon gives them a six up leadership, which is nothing amazing, but it does help with battle shock a bit. And the instrument they can take is really good on these guys. That gives you plus one to charge rolls, meaning that you can get into combat that much quicker. And of course, being a corn unit, that is really where they want to be. In combat, they have got two strength five, minus two AP, two damage attacks with their Hellblades, and then a further four strength six, minus one AP attacks from the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut attacks do have the Lance rule, so they are gonna be plus one to wound on the charge. So they're gonna be wounding Marines on twos, and even wounding things like Knights on fives rather than sixes. So it is a very handy little bonus to have on their Juggernauts as they charge into combat. The unit also gets a very tasty special rule in Brass Stampede, which basically gives you mortal wounds on the charge. You roll a d6 for each model in your unit, and then on a 4+, the enemy unit you charged takes d3 mortal wounds. So a full unit of 6 blood crushers can potentially be doing 6 d3 mortal wounds to an enemy, and even on purely average rolling, a unit of six will do around six mortal wounds to a squad, so you can easily kill a character if it's all by itself or wipe out two terminators before combat even begins. And that is a really powerful buff for a unit that in all likelihood, thanks to that 10 inch move and plus one to charge from the instrument, probably be getting the charge off on the target. Next up in the list, we move on to some bigger fish or bigger birds, technically. We have the Zinch Lord of Change. This guy being a greater demon is obviously a bit pricier, but he's still actually not that bad. He's only 230 points. And for what he brings you, I think that's actually really, really good value. He is toughness 10 with 18 wounds and a four up invun to protect him. So he can already take quite a beating if he needs to. And whilst he is of course all about the psychic trickery and magic, he does actually have some really good damage output himself too. On the ranged front, he has his Rod of Sorcery, which gives him six strength eight, minus one AP D3 damage attacks at 12 inches. And then the Bolt of Change, which is his 
ranged psychic attack that has two profiles. The first is nine shots at strength nine, minus one AP, one damage, or the focused profile, which gets a bump up to minus two AP and also D3 damage. So it is a lot better, but it does of course come with the downside of gaining the hazardous rule, which can potentially do some mortal wounds to you if you roll a one after firing it. I would say in general though, it's probably worth doing every time. The extra pip of AP is great in 10th edition and D3 damage rather than one is really, really solid against things like Marines and other elites. And even against vehicles, it's gonna be much more worthwhile going into them, being able to get up to potentially three damage rather than just knowing you're gonna be doing one. The Lord of Change can also throw hands in melee deceptively well. He's got five strength six, minus one AP, three damage attacks from the Staff of Zinch, and then three extra attacks at strength seven, minus two AP, and three damage. So it's not the best strength wise, but three damage each means he is legitimately great going into things like Tyranid Warriors, Necron Destroyers, Space Marine Aggressors, even things like Terminators, despite having that two up armor save, will still feel the pain because those swings are three damage. So even though they've got a relative lack of AP, you will be insta-killing a Terminator if they do fail a save. So he is actually a really solid anti-elite melee unit as well. On top of that, he has his abilities and these are also really quite great. The Master of Magics lets him choose one of three buffs for his shooting each shooting phase. It grants his Bolt of Change either ignores cover, lethal hits, or sustained hits D3. So all of these could be good in certain situations, but I think in general, probably sustained hits D3 is gonna be the one you go to the most. This can potentially get him up to 36 hits with his Bolt of Change if you manage to roll perfectly on your dice, which is just ridiculously powerful, to be honest. It's very unlikely to ever happen, but the potential is there. And with it, it means he can chew through tanks, elites, even hordes of infantry really, really effectively. And then on top of that, his shooting is buffed even further thanks to his other rule, which is the Demon Lord of Zinch. This is an aura that means units within six inches, so himself included, gain plus one strength to their ranged attacks. So on top of buffing other things like your flamers and horrors and all that kind of stuff, it means that his rod is actually strength nine and his bolt of change is strength 10. So it's actually really quite brilliant into things like rhinos or other toughness nine vehicles. It's gonna be hitting on twos, wounding on threes, and then minus two AP D3 damage in the hazardous profile. So it means he can easily do seven or eight wounds to a rhino before you even take into account the potential sustained or lethal hits from his Master of Magic's rule. And I just think for 230 points, he brings not only some really solid buffs to the shooty units you may have around him, but also his own damage output, both at range and in melee, really isn't to be underestimated. And he can easily wipe out entire squads of elites or light vehicles really, really well, which for that cheap-ish price tag makes him almost worth bringing in every single game, I think. Moving on from one Greater Demon to another, this time we go to a named Greater Demon. We have Shalaxi Hellbane next, the named Keeper of Secrets. Shalaxi is pricey. She is the most expensive Greater Demon, coming in at 400 points, but she is worth every single one of them, I think. She's got arguably one of the best stat lines in the game right now. She's got a 14 inch move, toughness 10, 20 wounds, a four up invun to protect her, and also a five up feel no pain, which on a toughness 10, 20 wound model is a huge multiplier in terms of durability. It makes things like D6 damage anti-tank weapons much less effective against her and gives her, you know, a solid 30% increased tankiness against things like bolters and other anti-infantry guns. So she is just super, super durable. It's quite funny that considering she's a Slanesh demon, she's arguably even tankier than something like a great unclean one. But then on top of that, not just satisfied with being stupidly good on the defensive front, she also has some unbelievably good damage output. She has six strength six, minus one AP, two damage shots 
from her Lash of Slanesh, and then her Pervain, being another psychic weapon, has got an 18 inch range and does D6 strength 9 minus 1 AP D3 damage shots with devastating wounds. Or you can do the focused version, which bumps it up to minus 2 AP and also gives it sustained hits 3. Note this isn't sustained hits D3, this is just a flat sustained hits 3. So she can potentially put a huge amount of mortal wounds into an enemy from 18 inches away. And then in melee, she gets even better. She's got four strength six, minus two AP, three damage attacks with devastating wounds from her snapping claws. And then the real meat of her melee output, Soul Piercer brings you six strength 14, minus three AP, D6 plus two damage attacks with precision. So yeah. If she gets into combat with a squad that has a character in it, that character is pretty much just going to die, potentially getting an insane 48 damage again if the dice go all your way right into their face. So she is really deadly at range, she is really deadly in combat, she is super super durable, and it doesn't end there because on top of that she also has a few really really good rules to go along with it. The Cloak of Constriction lets you choose an enemy unit in engagement range in the fight phase and you subtract one from the attacks from that unit's melee weapons. So when she's in combat, she's gonna be even harder to kill because your opponent will just simply have less attacks to throw into her. So this is a brilliant defensive rule and also helps if she is in a combat alongside another unit like some demonettes because of course there will be less attacks for your opponent to chuck into the demonettes as well, so it's a good defensive buff for her, but also quite a good defensive buff for anything else on your side that she's in combat with. And then she also has a rule called the Monarch of the Hunt, which is actually where she starts to get a bit silly. Shalaxi is a bit of a monster vehicle character hunter in her spare time, like that's what she enjoys doing. And so to represent that, she gets to reroll charges when she attempts to charge into a monster, a vehicle, or a character. That in itself is a really nice decent buff to have. But on top of that, she also gets to reroll a hit, a wound, and a damage roll against those unit types as well. Wait, no, sorry, 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 no. She doesn't get to reroll a hit, a wound, and a damage roll. No, sorry, that's my bad. I got that wrong. She gets to roll all hit wound and damage rolls against that unit. So she charges in and with her six attacks from Soul Piercer against a character or a vehicle or a monster, she can reroll all those hit rolls, all those wound rolls and all those damage rolls. So she is pretty much guaranteed to kill whatever she touches. She is just brutal. And despite being 400 points, I think she is so, so worth it because as I said, she will just destroy anything she fights and she is so durable and so fast that she will almost certainly reach combat relatively intact pretty much every single time. So for me, this character as well as the one I have in the number one spot in this list are probably the two best data sheets in the Demon Index and I think both of these, despite being expensive, especially Shalaxi, you really do not miss out anything by taking her every single time because she is just so, so good in every single way. Soul Grinders are fourth in our list. These guys are just plain brutal. They're toughness 11, they've got 14 wounds, they've got a three up save, they've got a four up invun, they've got an eight inch move, and they cost 215 points. They are just really, really solid. They can eke out a bit of extra movement thanks to their scuttling walker rule which lets them ignore friendly monsters and vehicles and also any terrain which is four inches or less so it is a lot harder for them to get bogged down by the scenery you may have on your board and they can get around the battlefield much more quickly and efficiently than your opponent might expect. And then on the output front they have a harvester cannon which gives you three strength 10 minus one AP at three damage shots to help them take out elites like aggressors or Tyranid warriors or terminators. And then they get a choice depending on the god you dedicate them to 
for another ranged option. And some things like the Torrent of Burning Blood and Phlegm Bombardment are great as an anti-horde or anti-infantry style weaponry, they've got a middling strength and damage but a decent amount of shots. The Scream of Despair is the Slanesh option and is probably the best generic one I think. It's 6 shots at 24 inches, it's strength 9, minus 2 AP, 2 damage, so it's great at killing marines, and it's got devastating wounds and a sustained hits 1, so it can do well into slightly bigger squads and hordes, or even vehicles if it needs to, so I do think that would be my go-to pick in general I think. The Warp Gaze on the other hand is the Zinch option, and this gives you D3 strength 12 shots, which are minus 2 AP, and d6 plus 2 damage. So this is your anti-armor, anti-tank gun, does some solid work against vehicles, but it also has the blast rule, so in a pinch it can actually do some fairly scary damage to squads of marines or terminators, or even bigger hordes of orc boys if that is really the only target you have going for you, at least you know you will be getting a few extra shots to try and kill off as many as you possibly can. The Soul Grinder also gets some fantastic melee, it has an Iron Claw which brings some genuinely terrifying strength 16, minus 3 AP, d6 plus 2 damage attacks to the mix, and with 5 attacks this can easily chunk a, an Imperial Knight down to half health all in one go, but then to finish it off you can also take either a Warp Claw which is 6 strength 8, minus 1 AP, 2 damage attacks, or a Warp Sword which brings you an extra 3 attacks at strength 8, minus 2 AP, d6 damage. Although they're both good at different things, I think in general the claw for me is probably better, just for the double the number of attacks. It's the same strength, and yes you get a lower AP and lower damage, but d6 damage is always really really swingy, and although 2 damage isn't great, if you know what you're going into, I think that strength 8, minus 1 AP, 2 damage is just a bit more reliable, especially when you have 6 attacks rather than 3, so for me, I would probably go for the Iron Claw and the Warp Claw as my option, in addition to the Scream of Despair as the ranged option for when I was running my Soul Grinder. Finally, in the number 1 spot in this list, I think nobody will be surprised that we have the first of the Demon Princes himself, Belakor. He's just plain fantastic, and he's pretty much a must take in any competitive demon list right now I think. He is 325 points, so he isn't cheap, but by god he is incredible. Toughness 10, 18 wounds, a 4 up invun and stealth means that despite not having lone operative, he is going to be a tough cookie to crack, that minus 1 to hit alongside his great toughness and 4 up invun gives him a lot of durability against enemy shooting, and as we will see in just a second, it does get even better. He has Betraying Shades as a shooting attack, which is again another psychic option, it gives you 9 strength 5, minus 2 AP, 1 damage attacks with devastating wounds at 18 inches, or he can focus it, which bumps it up to 12 attacks instead at strength 6 and minus 3 AP. It is still only 1 damage, so it's not the most terrifying attack, but devastating wounds can make it really quite nice if you roll well, and it is a solid bit of extra damage that he can do as he flies up to get into melee. And when he does get into combat, his Blade of Shadows is, again, really, really solid. It does have a strike and a sweep profile, it's either 6 attacks with lethal hits at strength 14, minus 4 AP, and d6 plus 1 damage, or if he's surrounded by chaff, it's 14 attacks at strength 8, minus 3 AP and 1 damage. The strike profile lets him do around 17 wounds to an Imperial Knight in one go, which is really quite impressive, whilst the sweep profile can easily kill 7 or 8 orc boys if they try to surround him and tie him up, so he is solid in combat, but where his real power lies is in his abilities. The Dark Master rule makes him a walking aura of the Shadow of Chaos, which is your army rule and lets you play around with Battleshock and enemy Battleshock causing extra mortal wounds if they fail it, whilst you get some healing and to regen some models if you pass yours, so it's a really nice bonus to have, and being able to have it 
pretty much anywhere you need it thanks to Bellacore and his 12 inch move is a really nice buff to have so you can get that aura exactly where it's going to impact the enemy the most or give you the most amount of healing on your forces. But then on top of that, he also gets to choose one of three buffs from his shadow form rule. Two of them are really solid as you get into combat. Pool of Despair forces enemies to take battle shock tests if they're below starting strength, which can mess up their plans really nicely, especially with the extra mortal wounds they'll be taking thanks to being in the Shadow of Chaos. And then Shadow Lord gives your units a buff, lets them reroll leadership and battle shock tests, which is great as the game goes on and on and you start to take casualties and those battle shock tests start to rack up more and more. But the real winner in his abilities is Wreathed in Shadows. Wreathed in Shadows is just crazily good. You essentially have a six inch aura from Bellacore and friendly demon units in the aura can't be targeted if the enemy is over 18 inches away. Yeah. So turn one, sure, some stuff can potentially move up and get within that 18 inch range, but anything more than 18 inches away just flat out can't shoot at Bellacor or anything castled up around him. And it's worth mentioning you don't need to be wholly within this aura, you just need to be within it, so it's very easy in that six inch bubble to fit a few squads of lesser demons, a greater demon or two, maybe even a soul grinder. You can get a lot of stuff bubbled up around a six inch aura and making it all totally untargetable by a significant chunk of the enemy force is so powerful. It gives you so much durability and freedom to just move up in your turn, probably still at full health or mostly full health, ready to just make this devastating turn to charge and wipe out a huge swathe of the enemy army in combat. It's so strong and especially against gunline armies, things like desolation squads, hammerheads, basilisks, fire prism, anything that wants to sit back and shoot from range is just going to be completely wasted and have their game plan completely ruined by this ability by making your key important units surrounding Bellacor just completely untargetable for them. It is genuinely a fantastic ability, even if for nothing else, then it forces your opponent to have to reposition and move certain things that they maybe wanted to keep back in their deployment zone safe from your army. So it is a genuinely fantastic ability and in my opinion alone, almost makes Bellacor taking at that 325 point price tag. So that is it for the demons. As I said, I'm mainly a mono corn player, but all of the units that we've talked about today are ones that I would strongly consider bringing if I was running a mixed list. They are all fast, they're all strong, they're all punchy, and they all bring some incredible buffs to your army for a very, very reasonable cost. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of this list and what units you would bring in your perfect demon list. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.